Create a game object called line and add a line render component to it. Personalize it to your taste. Turn this game object into a prefab by dragging it from the hierarchy window into the project window. Now we will make a script that creates a copy of this prefab with a line that follows our mouse or touch input. Create a new game object and add a new script called touchDraw. In our script, first we will create a coroutine variable called drawing, which will store a reference to the coroutine updating our line. In the update function, we will constantly be checking for two things. First, we check for a mouse button down event of value zero, which is the left click and happens to be triggered by touch input as well. When a new mouse click or touch happens, we will call the start line method. We will also check for a mouse button up event of value zero, which we'll call the finish line method. In our start line method, first we will check if a drawing coroutine exists, and if it does, we'll stop it. We do this to avoid any unwanted behaviors. Next, we proceed to start the draw line coroutine and assign it to the variable drawing to keep track of it and be able to stop it later. In our finish line method, which is called when we release our mouse or touch input, we will stop the current drawing coroutine. Finally, we will make our draw line coroutine code. First, we will create a new game object from our line prefab. To instantiate it, we need to tell it what game object we will be copying its position and its rotation. First, we're gonna load our line prefab. For this to work, place your prefab in a folder called resources inside your assets folder and double check the spelling of the prefab you are loading. Since we are using world space in our line render component, the position and rotation paths are irrelevant. So for position, we will use 000, and for rotation, quaternion.identity, which pretty much copies the rotation of the prefab it is copying. Next, we store a reference to the line renderer component in our newly created game object, then set its position count to zero. Coroutines allow for code to be run over several frames. In this one, we will create an infinite loop that works very similarly to the update method by adding yield return null at the end of the loop. This makes it so that it acts once per frame, then waits for the next frame to act again. Inside the loop, first we will calculate the current position of our mouse or touch input and convert it to world coordinates. We will set the Z position value to zero to make sure it is rendered in view of our camera. Then we will add it to our line render component by adding and assigning the new position. Since we assign this coroutine to the drawing variable, Whenever we want to stop this infinite loop, we can do it by calling stop coroutine drawing. Finally, make sure your camera's projection is set to orthographic and you can press play to start drawing your lines.